What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and I am back for yet another album review for you guys. We're in the final weekend of February and well there's a lot of stuff that came out this weekend. A lot of them I'm going to be talking about on the next Under the Radar but this is the first of two reviews I'm doing this weekend and I am talking about the highly anticipated solo album from George Corpse Grinder Fisher from Cannibal Corpse monstrosity paths of possession serpentine dominion but primarily cannibal corpse so <clears throat> yeah i'm a huge fan of corpse grinders vocals he is one of the best death metal vocalists of all time he has his own unique style and there have been a couple of people that have kind of taken up on his style primarily the vocalist of carnation kind of has a little bit of that vibe in his voice especially on their first album but Corpse Grinder and also one of the most lovable dudes in all of metal. He, he reminds me of myself, just an easygoing guy that just wants to have fun in life and not think of stupid shit. So, how this project came about, how this album came about, it was just an idea of Jamie Josta from Hatebreed who was like, you know what, George, why don't you do a solo album? And George is like, sure, why not? <laughs> so, as far as who he got on the lineup, we got the Belmore Brothers, Charles and Josh, I believe that's his first name. Let me double check my notes here. No, Nick. Charles, or Charlie and Nick Belmore, who both played in Toxic Holocaust, which that's more black and thrash, kind of, or thrash with a little bit of speed and black metal to it. So, kind of interesting how we get the Belmore Brothers. Charlie doing guitars and bass, and Nick doing the drums. And, of course, George doing vocals. So we get things started here with Acid Vat. Fast, tremolo riffs, and even some black metal blast beats kind of get us going here. And throughout the song, you do get some subtle melodies in the background, especially during the black metal blast beat sections, which I believe those were Eric Rutan who was doing that, because this is the only track on the album where Eric Rutan makes a, an appearance as far as anything guitars. Um, after the second chorus, we get into a hardcore inspired breakdown, and then things slow down a little bit more towards the end of the breakdown, as it feels something similar to, like, internal bleeding or something like that. Uh, Bottom Dweller being the next track, it starts off with a really cool, like, Morbid Angel inspired riff before it gets back into more of that hardcore groove that a lot of this album really kind of stays in that place and i'm going to talk more about it when we get towards the end and the song mainly stays in that hardcore groove for the most part while there is some cool double bass drum work going on here and there even through the breakdown it maintains that groove and it was very meat and potatoes kind of track on wings of carnage which is actually my favorite song of the album. Some awesome double bass work right at the beginning, and some solid groove that reminds me a bit of Bolt Thrower or even Blood Red Throne. And with how killer the chorus or the groove was on the track with the verses, the chorus has a little bit more atmosphere on top of it, or it's got an atmospheric feel going for it. And after the second chorus, you get the first true lead of the album. And it was just a quick fire, squealy dive bomb. But it does fit with the kind of bolt thrower, blood red throne inspired writing on this track. And it fits with the vibe that they're going for on this song. And like I said, this was my favorite of the album because it felt a little bit different compared to the rest of the album. All Souls Get Torn, some strange atonal riffing and blasts going on that kind of feel like a little bit like emulation to some extent, with another wild dive bomb lead to kind of get this track started. Then it turns a little bit thrashy afterwards with the verse before it goes back and forth with the atonal and riffing and the blasts. Another chuggy breakdown to kind of follow suit, and the remainder of the song does feel a little bit something like Hate Breed would have done. Uh, Death is the only key being the next track immediately into a hardcore breakdown riff and the vibe Kind of kick-starting this song and the track pretty much stays in that groove Almost the entire time even though the riff riffs kind of have a little bit of odd moments here and there 
And then we get to another lead section, which does have a little bit more of an atmospheric feel. It wasn't like a like a uh, shredding lead or a crazy feeling lead. It was going for more atmosphere. Uh, Crimson Proof, right away into some hardcore riffing, and then things get thrashy real quick afterwards to add a little bit more energy. During these thrash moments, you get some Slayer-inspired parts with the guitars, and towards the end, some faint melodic playing going on before it finishes off with another breakdown. Devourer of Souls. Now, when I heard that this was a song in the album, I'm thinking, is Corpse Grinder going to cover Broken Hope? No, it wasn't a Broken Hope cover. It was an original song. Cool drum and guitar intro kind of trying to build up towards something. And then it just goes into more of those hardcore-inspired breakdowns. Once again, feels very Hatebreed-ish. And there are moments when, during the breakdown, you do get some cool double bass work and some galloping guitars. And towards the end, more of that hardcore riffing to kind of end things off on this track. Uh, Defined by Your Demise kind of feels a little bit too much like some of the other tracks with the hardcore riffs. And it kind of stays in the same place for the most part with the groove it's got. Here and there, though, the drums do pick up a little bit of speed. Towards the end, the song starts to build up to something with the riff and the drums, and it led to some cool riffing that has a little bit of harmonized guitars going towards the end. Master of the Longest Night starts off a bit sinister, kind of like something you would hear from Gate Creeper. However, after that awesome beginning, the verse... The first verse was a little bit generic for my taste, though the chorus gets thrashy and you get a little bit of angular riffing. The second uh, verse definitely has more to offer than the first verse. And then another hardcore breakdown before it concludes with the cool sinister vibe that started this track. And then we get to the final track, Vaguely Human. Right away, some thrashy riffs and beats to get energetic right off the bat. And... The track kind of stays mostly in that thrash department, though the chorus, like with the guitars, it kind of provided this sense of an epic quality to it with the guitars, which was something different for the album. And I like the contrast between that kind of epic sounding guitars in the chorus and the thrashiness of the rest of the track. And that's how we conclude things. So overall... I kind of started to sound like a broken record with a lot of the things I was saying, but this album... It's it's a good gateway album, I would say, in terms of, like, say, you're one to get into death metal, but you want to have something that feels a little bit accessible with the song structures and the riff writing. This would be a solid gateway album to get you into death metal and taking them little baby steps. However, for me, being a big fan of Cannibal Corpse and Corpse Grinder himself, it's not what you would expect from Corpse Grinder on a solo album. It definitely doesn't really feel like a Cannibal Corpse album. So the album did its job as far as not sounding like a Cannibal Corpse album. It just feels very much kind of in that death metal meets hardcore punk kind of vein. And while I do enjoy some of that stuff, I mean, hell, Venom Prison and Gate Creeper kind of do that a little bit. But they're definitely way more on the death metal end of the scale. Here, it was like, this was mostly kind of like a hardcore groove metal album with death metal vocals. It does get thrashy at times. You do get hints of atmosphere and so on and so forth. But this album is kind of the definition of a standard meat and potatoes album. It's not a bad album by any means. It's a good album. There are some really good riffs throughout. It's just... I don't know, whenever I would think of a Corpse Grinder solo album, I was thinking we were going to get like a death metal sampler pack of like some brutal stuff, some melodic stuff, some doomy stuff, even a little bit of blackened stuff, but it just felt too kind of... The album kind of feels like, for the most part, it kind of stayed stuck in one place, but they try to add different elements, like some thrash, some black metal in the first track with the blast beats and the tremolo riffs, But, yeah, this one, it's not bad. It's actually a good album, but I was kind of hoping for more. But I hope that we get a second solo album from George in the future, and it can be expanded upon, and we'll see where it goes from there. So, for now, I'm going to give this album a 7.5 out of 10. It's a solid album if you like 
a ton of breakdowns and a lot of groove. This is for you, but for me, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, but hey, you get what you get. But anyways, what did you guys think of Corpse Grinder's solo debut? Let me know in the comments below as far as what I plan to review next. Probably going to review the new Allegiant album because... Why not? And also, I've done reviews for their past couple of albums, so why not keep the train a-rolling? But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Horns high, and I will see you soon. I've noticed yeah. that once people hit Slayer, they're like, is there something more extreme in Slayer? Yeah, it, it, it's the crossroad, you know, either you're going yes. like, okay, this is too much, or you're like, I need more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, I found Cannibal Corpse on YouTube when I was 12 or 13, and heard the Hammer Smash the face bass solo. Uh, of, of course. Of course, already then I was uh, a bass player, so, but when I heard that, I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do, this is it. <laughs> and then it just spiral downwards from there. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it never stops. Yeah. It devours you. Yeah, because... Yeah. Uh...